Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, we're going to be talking about render to texture. That's exactly what it sounds like. Rather than using OpenGL to draw into a window like you normally would, you can use OpenGL to draw into a texture, an image file, and that can be done, and you can use that to do just about anything you can imagine you do with an image file. You can use it to bring a whole world of image processing into your OpenGL programs if you really want to. You can use it to do shadowing and deferred rendering and reflections and all sorts of lighting effects that just aren't possible otherwise. Or you can do something really basic like I'm doing in this example, which is render your scene at a significantly lower resolution than your actual window. I'm rendering the scene at a 320 by 240 resolution, and of course my window is a lot bigger than that. And yeah, you can see all the joyous artifacts <laughs> of really low-resolution graphics. Notice, however, that even though it is really low-resolution, the red bricks have that really harsh aliasing effect, but the gray bricks still look pretty okay. Hint, hint at a future discussion of anti-aliasing. <laughs> but that's getting off-topic. Now, I would pull out my big blue GIMP image and draw out all the deep intricacies of rendered texture, but that's really all there is to it. It's just drawing to a texture. There's not that much to discuss. So, in this video, we're mostly going to be focusing on taking an actual 3D game engine and implementing rendered texture in it to show you how it's done and to show you how you can get all the wonderful rendered texture effects in a 3D engine. So, let's go ahead Let's dive in and let's get started. So, here we are in the example engine. Looks like this, just same example engine I've been using for all the videos in this series. You can download it from the GitHub repository, I'll leave a link to that, and a video on how to set it up in case, well, you have issues with that. And yeah. Now, the very first thing I want to do with render to texture is I want to make a way to stop being able to render texture, because, you know, OpenGL is a bit of a state-based thing. Once I start rendering to a texture, well, I'm eventually going to need to display something in the window. So, yeah, we're going to add sort of a fallbacks. A way to... well, maybe a fallbacks is not the right word, but, you know, some way to, well, set the window as the render target. So I'm going to add a new function to our window. I'm going to call it bind as render target. And what this is going to do is once this function is called, then any OpenGL function drawing something is going to be drawing inside the window. So, yeah. And you might be wondering, well, how do you do that? And OpenGL makes rendering different places really, really easy. You tell OpenGL where you want to render with a thing called a frame buffer. So... I'm going to say gl bind frame buffer, and you have to specify what type of frame buffer for some reason. We're just going to say gl draw frame buffer because it's the frame buffer we're drawing to, and we're going to say zero because zero is the default frame buffer. It is the window. It's the screen. It's well, yeah. <laughs> and cool. So once we call that, we're drawing to the window, and all's good in the world. But there is one thing you want to be very careful of. Whenever you are setting a new render target, one thing you're almost certainly going to want to do is use GL viewport. And that's going to tell OpenGL what sort of region it's drawing into. And the reason you want this is fairly obvious for the most part. You want to be able to draw to some location that, well, I don't know if location's the right word, but well, you want to draw to the entire area of the image. So if you're drawing to a window, you want to draw to the whole width and height of it. If you're drawing to a texture, you want to draw to the whole width and height of the texture. So yeah. So we're going to start at just 0, 0, and width is going to be, I'm going to call the get width function, and height's going to be, I'm going to call the get height function. And there. So that'll set the viewport to being drawing inside the window. How do we know this works? Well, I should be able to call, at the start of the render, <laughs> At the start of the render function of the rendering engine, I should just be able to do bind as render target and build however long that takes. And when I run, everything 
should work. Don't get any errors, don't get any weird stuff. And of course, we're still drawing the image in the window. So cool, now we can tell, draw the window. But, who, but so what? We could already draw the window. Well, now we're going to start modifying the texture so that we can draw into a texture instead. So our texture could have a function like, say, void find as render target. And we could draw to some texture. Unfortunately, that's a little bit... Oh, whoops. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's harder than it might seem at first. The actual bind as render target isn't that bad. It's just everything else that's a little bit tricky. The thing that makes this hard is that you can have more than one texture bound as a render target at the exact same time. And that wouldn't be an issue if it was something like, well, you we can bind more than one texture like this at a time by using GL Active Texture to select, you know, which texture is bound to what. But it's not like that. You have every texture you want to have bound at the same time must be initialized with the exact same frame buffer. And that makes things, well, hard. Well, not that hard, but a little tricky. So, in order to solve this, we're going to be modifying our texture data class so that this, the low-level representation of a texture, can actually have more than one texture in the same object. And the reason for that, of course, is to accommodate for this multiple render target thing. The other texture is going to be used for extra render targets if there are any. So, let's go ahead and change it. So, to start off with, I'm going to change M texture ID. It's going to be a GLUint pointer. And the reason it's going to be a pointer is because now I don't know how many different textures I'm going to have in the texture data object. It could be one, it could be 30. So, yeah. So, what I'm going to do right here, rather than generating a texture at the address, we just need to generate it at texture ID. Oh, before I do that, <laughs> more importantly, I'm going to say... Actually, you know, let's change the constructor while we're at it. It's going to take in an int I'm going to call numTexture. This is the number of textures we're going to have in this texture data object. Fortunately, we don't need to change the number of textures in the texture data object while... Well, yeah, once it's created. But, but yeah, we still need to... Well, potentially have many te different textures. So anyway, texture ID is going to be a new... Blah. <laughs> GLU int array of the size num texture. So there, that's just accounts for all the different textures we're going to have. And of course, we're going to need to change this constructor so it takes an int num textures. Right here, you got to be careful because now you actually have to dereference the pointer <laughs> to see if it's zero, and then delete all the textures. And after that, of course, then if then I'm going to do the check if if texture ID. That's going to make sure it's a valid pointer, and if it is, it's going to delete it. And that at least sets up the basic resource management. We're still going to need to do something like say generate texture num textures, and we're going to need some variable m num textures so that we can actually delete everything at the end. But other than that, we got basic multiple texture support in place. And there, so I'm just going to have. Actually, I'm going to reorder this, because that's going to bother me. And at the end, I'm going to have int m num textures. There. And I'll say the default for this is 1, just so I don't break all my code immediately. So let's build, and... Oh. And this can just return m texture id sub 0. Sure. Why not? <laughs> this should just have multiple textures without breaking anything, first and foremost. And... Ah, don't need to dereference that anymore. And there. We haven't broken anything, at least in creation. Have we broken anything in the destructor? No, good. So now, we have a way of initializing... Mul er, allocating space for multiple textures. We don't have a way of initializing multiple textures. So, in order to fix that, 
I'm going to move my init texture function, this, this thing right here, I'm going to make all that part of the texture data constructor. And that's actually going to be nice in the long run, because this way we don't have to worry about texture data where we create new texture data, but it's not initialized yet. <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. But yeah, we're going to need it so that we can actually initialize all these different textures that we create with whatever data or lack of data we might have for them. So here's how I'm going to do that. I'm going to create a private helper function in texture data, and I'm just going to call, well, it's going to be void first off, and it's going to be called init texture, and, or init textures. And that's going to do basically what init texture in the texture class is doing right now, except for all the different textures we allocated in texture data. And the question now, of course, is what parameters do we need? And there's really two different things that change, at least in this setup. The first thing is the ID, but we already know all the IDs in the texture class, so we don't need to worry about that. So, okay, I guess there's actually three things. The filter, where you might need different filters for different textures, and the data. So that's what I'm going to take in. Take an unsigned car pointer data, and I'm going to take in a GL float for the filter. Now, this would be data for one texture. We're going to need potentially a lot of textures. So I'm actually going to want our bell pointer, because, well, it's going to be an array of unsigned car pointers. So, yeah. And of course, a GL float pointer, because it's going to be an array of filters. And I'm going to say that there's going to be the, that amount equal to m num textures. And I'll enforce that with the constructor. You'll see. So, great. So now let's actually, well, you know, put this function into use. So, right here, where I have void init textures, well, where I'm pasting void init textures, I should say, I'm gonna... Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna just copy and paste all the stuff I have right here, all the OpenGL initialization, because I'm now going to do that for every single well, texture. <laughs> so, it's going to be a big giant for loop. i equals zero, i is less than num textures, i plus plus. And we're going to do this big initialization for all of them. And in fact, you know what? Let's move the generation of textures into here as well. Just, you know, just to complete everything. Let's see, we need to change texture target to m texture target. Width and height. You know what? I'm going to make those member variables. They don't need to be right now, but we're going to need them eventually, so I'm just going to go ahead and add them now. So, height. They'll be set to something or other in a moment. Right now I'm just focusing on init texture. So, m width and m height. And, ah. ID is just going to be, well, I guess M texture ID of I. And other than that, I guess we can just say everything's from the array. So, I'm going to make filters plural because that's going to bother me. <laughs> but, yeah. Other than that, it's just really reading everything from the array and initializing all the data from the array. So, filters of I, data of I, and what do you know? <laughs> we've got our well, our texture's initialized. Wonderful. Now, we're going to need to call it. And to call it, we need data and filters, and we need to assign something to m width and m height. So these two things need to be equal to something. So what are we going to do? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add those as parameters to construct. We're going to have to pass in some width, some height, and after num textures, we're going to pass in the unsigned car double pointer data and the geo float pointer filters. And I'm just going to copy this big giant constructor into the header files and let the compiler. <laughs> and I'm going to delete these two lines right here. And let's let the compiler. Oh, right. First off, I want to. Okay, first I want to assign width. Width and height, and width and height, and pass in data and filters to the 
init textures functions, and now I can let the compiler errors roll in. Because we're still using those getters in places, but yeah, I don't want them just yet. Oh, here, m underscore num textures. Let's build and ah, good. So I should be able to here pass in width, height, num textures, which is going to be one in this case. The car pointer of data, which in this case is going to be the address of data, and the geo float pointer filters, which is going to be the address of filter. And with that, I should be able to get rid of all this and have one more error because, yeah, the bind. So the way I'm going to resolve this is I'm just going to create a function here, because this, so this way I don't have to worry about accessing the data directly. It's going to be void bind. And have int. I'll call it texture num. <laughs> sure. Not, not entirely sure what to call it, but yeah, it's going to be which texture in the texture ID array am I going to bind? That's the idea, at least. And I'll put it after init textures. Well. Okay, how about this? I'll put it right here, and I'll move init textures up, because I want to group all the initialization stuff together. There. Now, it's texture data, bind. And unsurprisingly, this is going to call the geo bind texture thing, except without deleting the bracket. But, oh well, we'll fix that in a moment. And we're just going to use texture target <sighs> and the ID. Yeah, this is a bit of a worst case scenario for setting up render texture because we don't have any we don't have any multiple textures and one texture thing supported yet. But hey, now you know if, if your thing doesn't have it. So I'm going to bind. Wait. M texture data bind. Tech, I'm just going to bind zero because I'm not going to use multiple textures in the texture itself. Just it's just there for render targets support. Now I should be able to build, and if everything's gone according to plan, I should not have broken anything. Okay, that's working. Haven't broken anything here. No errors, so don't think I've broken anything there. Great. And one nice thing about this is now that all this initialization stuff is handled in the texture data constructor, I can completely get rid of this init texture function in the texture class. And I can just replace everywhere I used it with this constructor. Well, yeah, I guess it is the constructor. <laughs> so yeah, texture data, width, height, address of data, address of filter, that, that works. And there. Same thing here, except I believe width and height is going to be replaced with x and y. And other than that, I think I can safely delete the init texture function in here. Wherever you are. Ah, here you are. School. Build, run. If I haven't broken anything, then we do have multiple textures supported on the low level, which will finally enable us to do some render texture stuff. I should say it's not absolutely essential that you support multiple render targets. You can have render to texture without multiple render targets. Ah, it's just this is nice for genera generality. You know, you want this to handle those cases where it does need multiple targets. And there. So cool. We do have multiple targets in here. We have. Our texture data is handling. Wait a minute. Ah, wait. Make sure you're deleting array here, not just delete, because this is an array. I thought I forgot something in the destructor. Okay, cool. So now, let's finally get into implementing the frame buffer. So, let's get into the good stuff. Let's start doing some render to texture with frame buffers. Unsurprisingly, using a frame buffer means our texture data is going to have a frame buffer stored. So, I'm going to have some geo uint here. I'm going to call it m frame buffer. 
But here's the thing. Not every texture is going to need a frame buffer, because we're not going to render to every texture in the scene. At least I hope not. So here's how I'm going to do this. I'm going to start off by saying M frame buffer is zero, and it's going to bother me if my destructor is not directly under my constructor, so I'm going to move that. Yeah. So in my constructor, I'm just going to initialize my frame buffer to zero. That way, in my destructor, I can just do the same check I do for pointers. I can say if M frame buffer, which will be true if this is anything other than zero, then I can delete the frame buffer and be on my merry little way. Wait. Delete one at address of M frame buffer. There. So if we did create a frame buffer, I can just delete it here, and we can be on our merry little way. If there's not a frame buffer, then we haven't wasted any time and resources allocated them, and our destructing thing works just fine. So, no issue there either. So the only question then is, how do we generate these frame buffers? How do we create them? And setting up the frame buffer is not hard, it's just... it's gets a little tricky if you want to do it in a general way. So, the general way... well, okay, not, not, the, right, not the right word, but... The way you'd usually do frame buffers is you do something like this. You gen buffers, you... wait. Is there gen frame buffers? Yes, okay. So there's a specific gen for frame buffers, and then you just say one and address a frame buffer. Just like for most other buffers. So, there, we've generated a frame buffer. Then you want... then you're gonna want to bind that frame buffer. And... oh, I don't know. I'm gonna... oh, right. You want to say gl underscore draw frame buffer, because of course we're, this is a frame buffer we're drawing to, and the one we bind is m frame buffer. So cool, we've created a new frame buffer, we bound it, and all you have to do now is associate with a, te with a texture, and you do that with a function gl frame buffer texture 2d. And when you call this function, and well, of course, passing all the parameters, you associate it with a texture, and that's it. You can then bind the frame buffer, and set it up with all the different... well, not even do that, just bind the frame buffer, render, and go. It's that easy. But, unfortunately, this is not a very easy function to do generally. So, first off, we'll just pass in the parameters that should go here. So, one of them is draw frame buffer, because, you know, gotta specify what type of frame buffer you're using. This part is interesting, though, because this specifies what part of the rendering process you want to be drawn in this texture, and it's called the attachment. So, for instance, I can say gl underscore color underscore attachment zero, and that'll just, well, hmm, to comment this out real quick and build and run, don't know how to describe without showing, There you go. Yeah. See, like the image is actually being drawn in the window. That will be. That's what you would get if you had color attachment zero. But there's other things you might want as well. Maybe you want, say, GL depth attachment, and that'll get you the depth buffer, and that could be useful for, say, shadowing. I'm just going to put in color attachment zero for example. But yeah, just that is interesting. You can buy more than one part of it, or you can. Well, yeah, you can buy different things that are drawn, such as the depth buffer, or the colors, or the stencil buffer, if you really want. I think there is a stencil buffer, isn't there? GL. Yeah, there's... yeah, you can do the stencil buffer. <laughs> so yeah, that's just interesting part of the whole thing. You can bind different parts of it, but yeah. Next thing is the texture target, so this would be like texture 2D, or what have you, or cube map, or whatever it is. And finally, the texture ID which I'm going to say is texture ID of zero, just for something. And the last parameter, I'm not sure, I think this might be a pointer to initialize something or other, but I always just pass in zero. So, sorry, don't have the entire API memorized. But, yeah. And, there, that's... this is what they generally look like. But how do you do it fully generally? Well, here's one way. 
One way is you can have a function to initialize everything. So say call it initialize render targets. And this is just going to take in a GL enum pointer called attachments. This will just be an array of all those GL color attachments or GL depth attachments. All the different things should be attached to all the different textures that will be rendered to with this frame buffer. So right below knit textures, there'll be knit render tar targets. So, yeah. And I can move all this here. And of course, call init render targets with the attachments parameter, which I don't have yet. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and add that parameter. Hmm. Sure, I can have it at the end. Sure. And there, there's all the attachments. And finally, we can start generalizing this a bit. Now, keep in mind, this might just be a null list. They might not want a rendered texture thing. And that's a large part of why this gets a little bit tricky. So first check. Is it attachments equal to zero? If so, I can just return and nothing. Boom. That, that's the end of it. But... Otherwise, I'm going to have to iterate through everything. I'm going to have to go through, if, generate the frame buffer if... Well, I'll talk about that in a minute. I'll talk about why I'm leaving this in the loop in a moment, but yeah. So the loop, I'm just going to loop through everything... Well, all the different textures. Because all the textures can potentially be a render target. Some of them will, some of them won't be. Yeah! Fun. So... Here is what I'm going to do to initialize the frame buffer. If oh m texture ID i wait not what I'm looking for R wrong list <laughs> if attachments i is equal to gl underscore none that means no attachment and in that case I can just continue the loop with, without any concern. And incidentally, that means if all the attachments say none, we don't want this to be part of a frame buffer, then it's just going to finish the loop and nothing cause nothing's going to be initialized. But otherwise, I'm going to have to check if m under... Sure, it can be an else. Why not? Hmm. Meh. I'm just going to put it like this. <laughs> Doesn't particularly matter, but, you know... So if m frame buffer is equal to zero, then I'm going to create a new frame buffer for everything. So that's the way I'm going to initialize it. And other than that, I'm going to, well, attach the texture. So it's going to be texture ID of i because you know we're going through this whole loop of everything. And color attachment, or the attachment, is going to be, of course, be attachments of i. And that's the general way that things will be set up. And you might think that this is everything, that this will just work as it is. Of course, reality isn't that simple. What we need to do now is we need to work with something called the draw buffer. And here's sort of how this works. What we've done so far with our generating frame buffers and set in the frame buffer texture 2D. That's kind of like going in your kitchen, taking out a plastic bag, writing beans on it, opening the bag, and then walking away. <laughs> it's nice, but you don't have any food in the bag, you know? So that's sort of the point of the draw buffers. They're telling OpenGL to put the food in the bag. Or, I guess in OpenGL lingo, it would be like tell telling OpenGL to take the fragment shader output and write it to the attachment, or we'll write it to the frame buffer with the attachment. <laughs> so yeah, same, same concept, just one of them has really wacky sounding words to it, and one of them makes you hungry. <laughs> so yeah. So yeah, let's, let's just deal with draw buffers. Wait, oh, <laughs> I forgot. The part that makes it hard, now the part that makes this a little bit 
Hard? Not very hard, just a little bit different than just setting the attachments directly. Is you don't need to do this draw buffer stuff for the depth buffer and the stencil buffer. And the reason is the draw buffer is just concerned with fragment shader output. And you don't write the depth buff write to the depth buffer or the stencil buffer with the fragment shader. Those are written to elsewhere. So you don't need to tell OpenGL where to write with that. This is just purely for the fragment shader. And therefore it's only essentially dealing with the color stuff. So hopefully that makes sense. I know it's a little bit weird sounding at first, but hopefully it makes sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a GL... Mm, yeah, I'll create a GL enum array. I'm going to call it draw buffers. It's going to be the size of m num textures. m num textures, there we go. And here's the thing about draw buffers. What I want to do with... Bleh, what I want to do is right here, before I do the continue thing, because I'm just going to go through and copy the attachment to the draw buffer lit or to yeah. You know, I'll explain with code because that makes more sense. What I'm gonna do is very simple. I'm gonna take draw buffers sub i and say that's equal to attachment sub i. Usually. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna say if attachment sub i is equal to GL depth attachment, and theoretically you should also do or it's equal to GL stencil attachment. I'm not using stencil buffers at all yet, so I'm not worried about that. But just but keep that in mind if you're doing stuff with stencil buffers. You will need to set those stencil buffers. And if this is the case, then what I want to do is instead I want to set draw buffers sub i equal to just GL none. I don't want anything written to it because the depth buffers already be handled by well not the fragment shader. <laughs> so yeah. And otherwise, I'm just going to set that to attachments of I. And there. And down here at the bottom, I'm going to need to set the draw buffers. So GL draw buffers. Wait. Hang on. Okay, let's try that again. GL draw buffers. There we go. Okay, I thought I typed it wrong. Sorry. And of course, we're going to have one draw buffer for every texture. And we're going to set them to what's in the draw buffers. And there. Nice, simple, not that much to it. Very, you know, it just works like that. But there's one thing you got to be careful of here, of course. <laughs> the frame buffer might not be created here. You know, we might not have a frame buffer. So what I'm going to say here is if frame buffer is equal to zero, then we're just going to return here. We don't need to do any of this other stuff. So cool. So cool. We got all our draw buffers set here. And that's everything. The only thing we want to do now is we want to do GL check frame buffer status of GL frame buffer. And we want to see if that's not equal to GL frame buffer complete. Because if the frame buffer is not complete at this point, we've got an error. So I'm just going to print out an error message. I'm going to call it, I don't know, we've Yeah, I'm not really not, I really don't know. Um Rain buffer creation failed, sure. Not gonna be very creative with this one, but oh well. And just to make sure the program doesn't keep running and crash with some bizarre error, I'm just gonna assert false here so the program will stop running at this point. And okay, hey, I do have assert included, so good. And that should be everything. With that, we should have Render targets initialized should be able to build and run without an error because we're, we shouldn't be creating any render targets at this point. Hmm. Ah, right. I forgot. I haven't actually passed in any attachments yet. So let's change texture. We can have a GL enum attachment, which by default is just going to equal none. We're going to start off, by default, we're not going to have any attachment to this. We're not going to have anything, but yeah. So this is how we're going to specify render targets with like the actual texture constructor. So yeah.
<laughs> um, where is it? Ha, ah, here we go. It's Geo Edom. Attachment. Gotta take in the parameter, of course. Otherwise, how are we gonna use it? And like with data and filter, I'm just gonna pass in the address of the attachment. And that should... Yeah, that should not do anything at all. <laughs> so let's see if this runs. It should. Shouldn't be doing anything. By any strain of logic. But yeah, cool, we've got... Well, we're still not rendering to a texture, but... Um... Well, we are. We do have render texture functionality set up. And we aren't crashing. So, we should be able to go into the rendering engine and set up a basic render to texture example. Okay, so I went ahead and set up the example off screen because it is just an example. Don't want to spend tons of screen time setting up all this rendering stuff just to show off render to texture. So, yeah. If you really want the exact same setup that I have, everything is on GitHub. It's all in rendering engine.cpp, all the example stuff, so... And I've labeled all the stuff that's just, well, temporary with comments, like this, so... Yeah, you can... should be able to easily find it and easily set everything up. And great! But, I figured I should probably go ahead and do the sort of honors with the actual binding of the render target and such on screen. So here's how I'm going to do that. Now, remember, we still haven't actually implemented this bind as render texture thing. But what I'm going to do is a lot like what I've done with window. In fact, I'm going to copy the bind as render target thing that I have in window. And I'm going to modify texture data to have some void bind as render target exactly for this purpose. So, yeah. It's going to is going to do almost, yeah, like I said, almost exactly the same thing. The difference is, well, for one, we're going to use M texture, wait, M frame buffer as the frame buffer, of course. And for width and height, we're going to use M width and M, M height. There. And we're going to have an extraneous parenthesis for some reason. But there. So all we should have to do is sit in here, call M texture data, bind as render target. And what do you know? Of course, we still have to use it in the rendering engine, so I'm going to say G temp target, bind as render target. So now we should be rendering to the temporary texture I've set up as a global variable. <laughs> and also, right here, I'm going to set the clear color to just black. You know, just so it's not the blue that I'm using as the border. And other than that, that should be enough to actually run with some basic render to target functionality. Oh. And you're, of course, going to have to include the extra files for all this stuff, such as, well, mesh and. Uh, let's see, that's in C string. And that should be good, I think. So there. Hey, look! We have it! It's... We've rendered into a texture. We're drawing... We've draw, rendered our scene to a texture. And then we're drawing that texture on a plane in front of the camera. The problem is... Well, our planes are transparent. What's going on? Well, it's actually something interesting going on. If you look under the plane... Oh, it's really dark here, but... Yeah, look, you, could, you notice you can see the planes through the bigger plane. What's up with that? This is just one thing you got to be careful of with render to te texture. When you're rendering to a texture, all the usual buffers are just, well, not there. In, for instance, in window, we're setting up a depth buffer using SDL, but we're still setting up a depth buffer. In our texture, we don't have a depth buffer allocated for the texture, so when we do all the depth writing and such and rendering engine, well, that's not doing anything because we don't have we don't have a depth buffer to write to. 
So effectively, we don't have a depth buffer, and that's why it's causing all those strange issues. And actually, before I fix that, though, I just want to take the ambient value up to 0 0.2, because I'm reusing the ambient shader to draw the texture. That's why it's a little bit dark, and, well, yeah, just so we can see things a little bit better. It's still one-fifth brightness, but, you know, going to the plane, yeah, the plane bleeding through is a lot more obvious now. So cool. So, let, how on earth do we fix this depth buffer conundrum? Now, one way you can solve this is by having one of your textures, one of your these attachment things, as a depth texture. And then your depth buffer will be written to that texture, and depth buffering will work properly, and you have a nice texture, one containing your depth buffer, and one containing the color buffer. And all is good in the world. But, if you don't have a depth texture for whatever reason, and you don't want a depth texture, then there's another solution. And that's this thing called a render buffer. Now, a render buffer works a lot like a frame buffer. It's some place in GPU memory that, well, you can write render to. <laughs> the difference is render buffer doesn't necessarily have to be drawn to a texture or drawn to anything like that. It's just some location in GPU memory that you can render to, and that's it. Nothing fancy to it. There's not much you can do with it, usually, but if you're just looking to have a depth buffer, it's exactly what you're going for. So, yeah. I'm going to have a glvint for a render buffer. And this is going to work kind of like how I'm handling the frame buffer value, or handle. I'm going to start off with render buffer at nothing. That way, at the end, I can just test if we have a render buffer. If we've created a render buffer, then I can delete render buffers, one at the address of in render buffer. And otherwise, nothing happens and all's good in the world. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have a boolean called has depth, which is going to start off equal to false. This is going to test if we have a depth texture. And the way we're going to know if we have a depth texture is simple. This if check right here. We're te checking if attachment, if one of the attachments is the depth attachment. If so, well, then there is a depth texture. And then we can just use that texture as a depth texture, and nothing else needs to be done. But down here, if we don't have a depth texture, this is when we need the render buffer. So, in fact, I'm going to copy the gen frame buffer and bind frame buffer thing, because it's almost identical, it's just with render buffer. So, gen render buffer is a... Guess what? M render buffer. Who would have thought? And gl bind render buffer. This is just going to be, well, gl render buffer. And of course, that's going to be m render buffer. Now, what you want to do here, gl render buffer storage. This tells OpenGL what sort of data is going to be stored in the render buffer. So, in this case, my render buffer is going to be storing the depth attachment. So, see, it kind of works like the whole attachment thing. You're just, well, except this. Well, yeah, it was. <laughs> except, except we're doing it with render buffer rather than the frame buffer now. And I'm sorry, that should actually be GL depth component. Now, since this is essentially just some area in memory that we can render to, we do need to specify how big it is, so the width and the height of this render area. And there, that's all we need to do to specify the render buffer. All we have to do now is attach the render buffer to the frame buffer, and we're done. GL frame buffer, wait, frame buffer render buffer, so, yeah, because we're attaching a render buffer to the frame buffer. And if this is going to be, of course, GL uh, frame buffer. And we're going to be attaching M render buffer, say GL render... wait. Sorry, I have the parameters backwards. This is where you're supposed to put M render buffer. Here is where you're supposed to put depth attachment, because this is where I'm going to be rendering depth to, the render buffer. And there. That should solve the depth texture problem. So now we should have... yeah, we should have a depth 
or render buffer allocated for the depth texture if we don't have a texture, you know, allocated for it. And what do you know? Look, depth testing's working now. We got our texture showing up right without the weird translucency thing, and planes cover up the rest of the planes. So, what do you know? We have our low resolution render after all. <laughs> and yeah, so, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you next time. That's really all there is to render to texture. It's mostly just wrestling with OpenGL to get it to work. The concept itself isn't hard, but yeah, there you go. So thank you, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and see you next time.